we exhort you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here, somebody? We are singing praises to the Lord. And I'm missing part of them. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord. This is the day. This is the day. Wait, wait. Listen. The way some of you are standing, and I see some of you in Kedem Kedem. One is standing, Domi Abra. One is in San, uh, what do you call it, New York. This is what I want us to do. As we are singing, you are moving from the front to all the way back there because of COVID. You cannot hand sick, but elbow, right? Or fixed bone. Hallelujah. Listen, some people, when they come to church, it's not because of the preaching or the worship. But a sister who came and said, Hi, how are you? Because of that, they become a member of the church. They went home and they couldn't take that from their head. Oh my God, the way the sister smiled to me at the church. Oh, the way the brother said, Hi, I'll go to that church. Hallelujah. And so the reason why some of our churches, we are not full is because the visitors come, they will stand where they are when they close. They will live as they came. But I want you to fill somebody's life with a smile and happiness. Are you ready? Are you ready? And be ready to dance. Hallelujah. Let's go. Uh -huh. I I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I am watching.
Just bless him. Just thank him for your life, your family. Thank him, thank him for the journey, how far he has brought you. Lift up your voice and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Mahado skadi sikataya zindaya labros katan taya sikarabara baros zantaya labros katan taya labros sikataya labara dos eba ba 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 labara sikataya labara labara dos. Santa Yala Bada 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 Santa Yala Bada 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 Somebody just bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Kaba Father, we bless you. We give you the praise yes. this very day. Jesus. Let the excellency of your spirit take control of this place. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please be majestically seated. God bless you. Amen and amen. Um, we apologize. We've been having some issues with the microphones and the sound. Um, so if you are hearing some things you don't like, um, it will be worked on next week. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We welcome you back into the house of the Lord. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Richard, God bless you for joining us. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, God bless all of you, um, your contributions, your giving, um, and what you are doing. May the Lord bless you in a major way. Hallelujah. Um, I've been saying to you that we are moving out of this place and I believe with every fiber and every conviction in my spirit that before this month ends, we will find a place to move out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not just saying it. Uh, my, my, my spirit is at peace where it is and, and I feel good about it. Hallelujah. So um, there is nothing yet. But next Sunday, I believe and I promise you, you will have good news. Hallelujah. Amen. So God bless all of you um, for your giving, your love, um, and what you have been doing. Um, I believe that it is of an expedient matter that we move out of this place and transition into that which God wants for us. And um, the truth is that many of you responded to the call of giving in this place and I want to say that God bless you in a marvelous way um, for, for, for what you are doing, amen um, it, it's, it's, it has not been easy but yes still you took from what you have and you gave may God bless you for that amen amen this very morning come with me to Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 This very morning, I am carrying a divine assignment, a divine message, a prophetic message for you. I did not come this very morning with a sermon. So my exegesis and my homiletics may not be structured and perfect this morning because this morning I came with a message and not a sermon. I hear me somebody. I hear me somebody. I hear me somebody. I believe that this morning God will speak to someone. I believe that this morning there is a word in season for someone. I believe that after this morning you will see your life turn a different direction to the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. When I came to deliver to you, I was contemplating on, on, on the message and I was supposed to wear sack clothes. Amen? But I didn't have it. Amen? And say, I should have asked you. I was supposed to put on sack clothes, but I did not have it. That is why I'm wearing what I'm wearing today. It is not the perfect demonstration 
of what I want to deliver to you this very morning. The Bible says the prophet Elisha called a servant of the prophet, one of the sons of the prophet, and he said, take with you an oil, run to the camp of Samaria, where the armies are, and he said that you will find Jehu, take him into the tent, and pour oil on him, and run away. Listen to me, this morning I believe that God has strategically caught us together for a reason in a season. I believe that God has called us together to do something. And I am not just going to speak on a sermon but I'm going to make you understand a prophetic word that is in season for you and I. The Bible said the prophet said unto the son of the prophet he said pour the oil on him and run away. Which means that this morning I may lose some of my pulpit etiquettes. In other words I may not behave like a preacher at a certain point. The reason is because I came to pour an oil and this oil requires me to pour it and leave it just as it is. I believe that after this morning somebody will move from where they are to where God wants you to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the second half of the year. It is the seventh month of the year. It is the month of your alignment with God. And I declare that this month your feet will change into the perfect alignment of God that where God wants you to be you shall be there after this morning in the name of Jesus listen to me Ecclesiastes 3 Ecclesiastes chapter 3 boy let me have a tissue okay Ecclesiastes 3. To everything, verse number 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Thank you. To everything, somebody say, everything has a season. Somebody say, everything has a season. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have a season in my life. Turn to someone and said, you are in my life for a season. Hallelujah. Amen. I see, I see Mr. Austin turning to his wife and said, you are in my life for a season. Some other. <laughs> but it is true. It's just why it is true. Amen. The Bible says, everything to everything there is what? A season. Everything has what? A season. And the Bible says not just that. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. So everything has a season. And everything has a time. Everything has a season. And everything has what? A time. Everything has a season and everything has a time. In other words, there is a time for God to lift you up. In other words, there is a time for you to shine. Are you hearing me, somebody? In other words, there is a time for your manifestation. Everything has a season and everything has what? A time. This morning, I'm talking to you on the law of season and reason. The law of season and reason. Everything has a purpose. Everything and to every purpose, there is a season to it. There is a season. There are four seasons in this country. And every season is unique and different. Some seasons, the leaves will fall. Some seasons, things will dry up. Some seasons, things will go cold. But it is a season. I hear from somebody. I said it is a season. In other words, you have a dry season in your life. You have a season where things will dry up. 
you have a season where things will not look good you have a season when things will not feel right you have a season where love will was cold you have a season when nobody will like you it is a season are you hearing me somebody i said it is a season there is a summer time and there is a winter time there is a time when the flowers blossom and there is a time when the flowers wither away i said there is a season for you there is a season coming where you shall blossom i said there is a season coming where you shall manifest that which is inside of you everything has a season listen listen you, 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 you can never jealous anyone when you understand that everything has a season. When I see Minister Christian prospering, I know it is a season for him. I can't jealous him because I know my season will come. Are you hearing me somebody? I said it is his season. So I cannot jealous him. The Bible says rejoice with those that rejoicing and mourn with those that are mourning there is a season for everyone it may be a season of rejoicing and it may be my season of mourning but a time is coming the tables will change hands i say i declare i said this month will not end but your season shall manifest i say your season shall manifest in the name of jesus listen to me listen to me a season is a period dedicated for a purpose. Time is found in a season. Time is a point in a season. Now, if five women are pregnant, we say they are in their season, but they are not in their time. Are you understanding this? If five women are pregnant, they are all in their season, but they may not all be in their time because there is something we call the due season. And the due season is the time. And the Bible says everything has a season and everything has a time. The time is when the season manifests. So the fact that you are in your season does not mean you are in your time. Sometimes you feel uncomfortable and you know something is going on inside of you you feel it you know it you are expecting it it is not happening but you know it why because you are in your season listen to me when a woman is pregnant she goes through pangs when a woman is pregnant she goes through pains when a woman is pregnant she goes through all kinds of changes why she is in her season listen to me i want you to understand that this church is in its season you may not see it but it is a season and the season is because there is something 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 about to be delivered something about to come out there is something about to manifest there is something and listen to me some of you you don't get it because you don't understand how season operates when a woman is pregnant in a season the closer she draws to the season her posture change her walking change everything around her change her this bus change she walks like this because her season has changed her posture her season has changed her demeanor and so sometimes you may come here and I tell you all the time don't be discouraged it is a season a posture has changed there has been something different and you may not understand it but I came to tell you it is a season it is a season and, and, and when, when you are oh my god you cannot convince a pregnant woman that she is not pregnant you cannot convince a pregnant woman that she is not in her season you cannot tell a pregnant woman that she doesn't feel what she feels the 
Bible says Rebecca went to Isaac and said Isaac I feel strange I am not comfortable and Isaac said Rebecca that time of the month and Rebecca said Isaac this is different so the Bible says Isaac did not understand Rebecca and so Rebecca said to Isaac because Isaac said Rebecca you are fine everything is okay don't worry and Rebecca said if everything is okay why am I like this the season is not comfortable the season will make you look in a certain way that you yourself will not understand it and people may not understand you why because the season even makes you uncomfortable so the bible says Rebecca went to God herself listen listen this morning I'm going to show you something that if you are in your season what you want to do is to pray the bible says and rebecca entreated the lord herself she went away from isaac and went to god directly because isaac had misinterpreted her season and there are many of you here you may not understand it can i tell you something i'm going to say this again because some of you don't understand me church we are in the seventh month. We, 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 we are in the seventh month of the year. Are you hearing me, somebody? Which means we have crossed over half of the year. Which means we have entered the second half of the year. If you don't understand seasons and times, people will be begging you to come to prayer meeting. If you don't understand time, if you don't understand season that is why I say listen if you come to church and you are leading prayer you are leading worship and there are five people here listen to me do it like there are hundred people here you don't need anybody to be 50 years before you feel encouraged and pump up because you don't understand season the bible says redeem the time for the days ahead are evil listen if you understand your season and they call you to Friday prayer, you go. It is a season. A woman that is pregnant goes for daily checkup. Why? She is in a season. So she goes, she keeps a regular appointment. She keeps a regular check. Uh, 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 uh. If you are in your season. So I, I mean, when I come here Friday, I am not discouraged. I, I am not. I tell you the truth. God is my witness. I am not. I am fine. I, I, I can minister to two and I'll go home satisfied. Because I understand seasons. I understand seasons. If the whole choir is disbanded, I will not be moved. Why? Because I understand seasons. If we have to come here and sing with my voice, we'll sing with my voice. <laughs> Look at you. No, no, not you, not you, not your voice. That one is no good. Listen to me. You, you got to understand the season that you are in. The Bible says there is a time, there is a season. The Bible said to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Tell someone you don't have too much time. You are wasting too much time. The Bible said everything has a season. Listen to me. Every purpose has a season and a time. And a time is coming that purpose will expire. A time is coming, your gift will no longer be needed. A time is coming when nobody will want you because your season is expired. To everything, there is a season. You, 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 you have but a season to fulfill that which is inside of you. Let, 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 me, let me go to the scripture so I can explain certain things to you because. I didn't come to preach today. I came to deliver a message. So let's deliver it. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. This microphone is doing something against me. 
Ecclesiastes 8. Are you there? If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, say God help me. Ecclesiastes 8. <laughs> Which translation is this? Oh no, let's change to the King James. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 5 to the new King James. It says, it says, it says, it says, he who keeps his commandment will experience nothing what harmful. The other translation says, this is the King James, right? The new King James. Let me give you a different term. Let's go to the old King James. It says, whosoever keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil then. <laughs> Whosoever keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil then. When you are in the season of God, you are not afraid of anything. When you are walking in the dimension of God, when you are walking in the way of God, when you are walking in the calling of God, when you are walking in the assignment of God, the Bible says, he that keepeth the commandment, he that trusts the Lord, he that obeys the Lord, the Bible said, he will fear no evil ten. You cannot tell me that the devil is more powerful than God. You cannot tell me that those witches are more powerful than God. The Bible says, he that keepeth the commandment shall not be afraid of anything. The Bible says, to him that is pure, all things are pure. When you walk in the ways of God, David said, here though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou, O God, art with me. For thou, O God, art with me. He says, I will fear no evil. When you are walking with God, you don't fear anything. You are not moved by anything. You are not troubled by anything. When you know you are in your season, you are not troubled by any evil. There is nothing you can do to someone that is in the season of God. There's nothing you can do to them. You can't stop them. When someone is in their season, you, you, you cannot stop them. For the Bible says in Lamentation chapter 3, verse number 34 and 35, the Bible says that to deny a man his right before the face of the Lord, to, 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 to subvert the cause of a man, the Bible said Jehovah does not permit it. Jehovah does not allow it. Scripture declares, who is he that speaketh a word and it cometh to pass when Jehovah God has not commanded it. When you are in the path of God, you don't need to worry about anything. The Bible says, he that keepeth the law of God, Scripture says, he fears no evil. Why? Let's find out. Let's find out. Karabosita karados. The first number. Let's, let's find out. Be, because. Somebody say because. Oh Jesus. He says because. He says. He says. He, he that walketh in the commands of God. Whosoever walks in the commands of God. Shall fear no evil. Because. Because is a reason. To something. Because it's a, 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 a solution to something. It says because to every purpose there is what? There is time and judgment to every purpose. To everything there is a time. Ah, Jesus. To everything there is a time. You know your time. You know that there is, there is, there is, there is a season for everything that God has said about you. And when you walk in it, the Bible says you can be assured to walk in that which God has said. And the Bible says that you will not fear any evil or any work of the enemy. Why? Because to every purpose, there is a time. Listen, 
If you don't understand the law of time, you, you will mess yourself up. If you don't understand the law of time, you appear to church late. If you don't understand the law of time, she will go to work late. If you don't understand the law of time, she will go to your interview later. If you don't understand the law of time, she will have an appointment and you show up later. The law of time will work against you. The law of time. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The law of time is what manifests a season. You cannot make an appointment with God and show up later. And make an appointment with your girlfriend and show up early. You don't understand the law of time. You don't understand the law of season. Oh my God. If they tell you that church is 9 o'clock and you understand the law of time, you're going to be there 10 minutes before 9, 15 minutes before 9. Because you understand the law of time. The law of time. You got to understand it. If you have an interview and you show up five minutes before the appointment, you should know that that alone has disqualified you. You should know that that alone has taken away that which you were supposed to receive. They gave you the appointment for the job, but you may not get the job. Why? Because you disobeyed the law of time. Evil will not work against you until you disobey the law of time. He says, he says, he says, he that keepeth the commandments of God, he that walks in the ways of God, he that walks in the laws of God, the Bible says he will fear no evil, he will suffer no evil because of time. Because to every purpose there is a time and there is a judgment. Judgment means to discern. It means to understand what is going on. And there are many people who don't understand where they are right now in their life. There are many people who don't even understand why they are in church. Why they worship God. Why they pray. There are many people who don't even understand why they need to spend time on Wednesday, on Friday, on Sunday. They don't get it. The Bible says every purpose has time and every purpose has judgment. It has discernment. The Bible says the sons of Issachar understood the times. Understood the times. They understood the times. Can I tell you something? To everything there is a season and there is a time. That's where time is not the physical time. The physical time is what we call the chronos time. The chronos is where you get the word chronology or chronological. That's where you get that word chronology. So that is the physical time. It is the orderly arrangement of things. That is not what we are talking about. When the Bible talks about time, it is talking about the chaos time. It is talking about the time in the spirit. When I ask you right now, what is the time? You are going to tell me the physical time. But what I am asking for is not the physical time. I am asking you, what time is it? Between you and the purpose and the assignment of God in your life. I am talking about the chronos time. When you know the chronos time, when you know the chaos time, from the chronos time, you don't feel delayed. The reason why some people feel like they are delayed is because they are watching the chronos. Sarah was not delayed by the calculation of God. Sarah was in the chaos of God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Elizabeth was not delayed by the calculation of God. Elizabeth was in the chaos time of God. She was in the spiritual calendar of God. Physically, in the chronos, it looks like she is delayed, but she is not delayed. You got to know your season. You got to know your season. You got to know your appointed time. The Bible said Jesus was crucified from the foundations of the earth. But the Bible says when the fullness of time came, if Jesus was crucified from the foundations of the earth, it is not the chronos, it is the kairos. For the Bible says when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. You got to understand that God has a season and he has a time to fulfill 
reveal that season. When a woman is pregnant, she goes. Two, three, five women are pregnant. And one person delivers. Can I tell you something? The other person who has not delivered yet does not even bother. That's not a big deal. Yeah. My time is also coming. Oh my God. I wish, I wish there are Christians who know that their time is also coming. A pregnant woman that knows that she is in her season. When she sees another delivers her, she does not cry. Why? She does not even go and say, God, please, God, please. God, please, I want to deliver. Why, God? Sister B delivered yesterday, God. I know I am six months pregnant, but I got to deliver. Church, it is not your time. It is not your time. It is not your time. You, 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 you are in your season, but you are not in the time. And you got to know the difference so that you don't fight anybody. So that you don't worry about anybody. And can I tell you something over here? Stop asking people, when are you going to get married? Stop asking people, when are you going to give birth? Stop telling people, when are we going to see that man, that woman? Everybody has a season and everybody has a time. I came to tell somebody, I said your time is coming. I said your time is coming. God has not made you a midwife to force people to get married today. God has not made you a midwife to force people to deliver before their time. I said there are seasons and there are time. I have never seen a pregnant woman, four months pregnant, fasting and praying. And say, God, please, I want to deliver. God, please, you got to know it is a season. And you got to know there is a time for that season. There is, there is time and there is judgment. There is time and there is discernment. Church, you got to understand where you are. This ministry, got to understand where this ministry is. Yeah, it feels better over here. Over there is terrible. Amen. <laughs> no, I say it, feels, it feels better here. It feels terrible. No, it's just even the speakers. This whole place is this whole place is something else. Yeah. But, 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 but you got to understand that this church is in a season. I hear me, somebody. You 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 can't be discouraged in your season. I hear me, somebody. A woman that is eight months, seven months pregnant is not discouraged in her season. You 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 you, you are in a season. And you got to be able to discern. Everybody here has to be able to discern what time it is right now for your life in the spirit. So that you don't move when people are moving. You don't do things when people are doing things. When people are buying cars, you buy cars. When people are buying houses, you buy houses. When people are investing, you, I mean, in bitcoins, you invest. You, 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 you are not discerning times and seasons. You are not discerning. The Bible says there is, there is, there is a time and there is a judgment for every purpose. You, 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 you have to discern. You don't marry because everybody is getting married. You, you got to discern the time and the season that you are in. You got to be able to judge. You got to be able to understand when is your time and when is not your time. The fact that you are 38 does not mean that you got to get married. You got to discern when it is your time. It's your time. But can I tell you something? What if it is your time and you are not delivering? Which is where my message started, which is where I close. <laughs> what if it is your time? What if a woman is nine months pregnant and the baby is not coming? You feel it. You know deep inside of you something is boiling. You can sense that something is about to manifest. You can sense that there is something 
there is, there, is, there is something in you, but you are not able to deliver it. You can sense it. You can rehearse it in the mirror, in the bedroom. You can rehearse it. But when you get to the public, you can't deliver it. What if you have got to a place and it is your time, it is your due season, it is your carous time, it is that moment for you to deliver and yet you cannot deliver. What happened to a woman? You take her to the labor ward. Her water breaks. And yet she is not pushing to deliver. What happens to her? She is in a critical stage. She is in a stage between death and life. Watch this. Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. My God. Verse 1. My God. And so it was. When King Hezekiah heard it. That he tore his clothes. And covered himself. With sackcloth. And went into the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim. Who was over the household. Shibna the scribe. And the elders of the priests. Covered with sackcloth. To Isaiah the prophet. The son of Amos. And they said to him. This says Hezekiah. This day is a day of trouble. And rebuke. And blasphemy. For the children have come to birth. But there is no strength to bring them forth. The children have come to birth. The children have come to their season. But there is no strength to bring forth. You have gotten to the time of your due season. But there is no strength to bring forth. You have gotten to the place of divine assignment and manifestation. But there is no strength to bring forth. That which it takes to catapult you to your next level. You don't have it yet. And you know what he said? He says, this is a day of trouble. The New Living Translation says, this is a day of trouble and insult and disgrace. The King James says, it is a day of trouble and a day of rebuke and blasphemy. The NIV said a day of trouble and insult and disgrace. Listen to me. When you are in that time of delivery, when you are in that time where God promised you that you are going to deliver and you are not delivering, it looks disgraceful. When God promised and God said that it's going to happen and you know of a surety you are in your season but nothing is coming out. Nothing is coming forth. It is a day of trouble. It is a day of rebuke. A day of insult. A day of blasphemy. A day of embarrassment. That God said it and yet still it still hasn't happened. The woman is on that labor ward. She knows she's pregnant but she can't deliver. The Bible says when Isaiah heard it she tore off her clothes. Church, listen. Because I'm landing over here. If there is any time for us to pray, is to pray this month drastically. I hear me somebody. Why the prayer? Because there is a reason for the season. There is, there is, there is, there is a reason to do it. David said unto his, his brothers, he said, is there not a cause? When there is time and you are not manifesting. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Can I tell you something? If you are in line, you are in a queue. And you have waited on the line on the queue. You have waited for 
an hour. You went to your doctor's appointment. Only in this country, the doctor's appointment is nine o'clock. You are not the only nine o'clock. Everybody has nine o'clock. So everybody gets that nine o'clock. When you get there, you write your name and then you form a queue and you sit down and then you sit there for hours and then your time comes. When your time comes and they mention your name, the receptionist cannot skip you. If the receptionist skip you, you have a reason to object. You have a reason to refuse. Why? Because it is your time. You don't understand what I'm telling you. You, you, you don't understand. I am trying to tell you that this is not the time. This is not the time for this church not to move out of this place. This church will move out. I said by the end of this month, we will find a building and we shall move out. What is today's date? What is today's date? 24th. So we have seven days. Seven days. I said we will find a place and we will move. You said why? I have a reason. I hear somebody. I have a reason. We have completed a season. And we are now in a reason for the season. We have gotten to the place of the time of the appointment. And when you are at the time of the appointment, she cannot be denied. She cannot be refused. Ezekiah said, it is a day of trouble, a day of rebuke, and a day of blasphemy. For the children have come to birth and they are not able to deliver. But we got there. We just couldn't deliver. Are you hearing me, somebody? I said, we got there. We just couldn't deliver. But what happens when you are not able to deliver? Let's finish. Let, let's see what he said. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said. The verse number four. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God and will rebuke the voice which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer from the remnant that is left. If there is ever a time to pray, it is the reason in the season. He says, therefore, lift up prayer for us. Lift up prayer for the remnant. And you know when Ezekiah was done with this you, you got to read the whole story When Ezekiah was done with this The Bible says he went back into the house of the Lord And he began to pray himself And he began to pray Isaiah had prophesied After he received the message And when Ezekiah got the message He went back into prayer Then Isaiah prophesied again And Ezekiah went back into prayer again why? Because it is a time for prayer. There is a reason why you cannot be objected to in your season. Church, I pray that wherever you are this very day in your life, I declare upon your life that there is a reason for this season. And your reason will end in manifestation. I said, I, I said this season will end in manifestation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be on your feet. Listen. Listen. When that time comes, when that time comes, God said to Hezekiah, He said, This is what I want to tell you. He said, This year you shall eat of that which you have not planted. And He said, The following year you shall eat from that which has been gathered unto you. And the following year, you shall sow and you shall reap. When your time comes, you do not struggle for anything when you are in your time. When your time comes, there is no comparison and there is no competition. When a woman is on that labor ward of delivery, other women don't compete with her. She has the doctor's attention at that moment. When you are working in that time, just relax yourself. Some of you are here and you want to see something happen in your lives. 
And you feel like if you don't do it now, you don't have enough time to do it. I want you to understand this. That when that time of fulfillment comes, you will not struggle. You will not struggle. Because grace will be the reason why you will not struggle in that season. You will not struggle. Somebody asked me a question. He says, will this church ever get back to how it used to be? And I said, it will not struggle to get there. Because we have passed a season. And when you get to a certain place, you don't struggle. It is grace that carries you. Grace becomes the reason in that season. And I want somebody to know right now in your life, you don't need to panic. You don't need to panic. You don't need to. A lot of people have went ahead of you, but you don't need to panic. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. I have seen someone give birth to five children and lost all of them. You don't need to panic. You will get to that place where you will not have to struggle. When you know your season and your time, you don't compare yourself to other people. You don't compare. You don't compete. I said that time is coming for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare your blessings upon this ministry and upon this church. I declare a new standard in the lives of your people. I call forth the manifestations of your best out of us. I call forth maximum impact in the life of your people. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let the oil of acceleration come upon your people. That your people will pick up their feet from behind. And you will cut up them to where they must be. Strengthen the feeble hands. Strengthen the weak knees. Empower your people, oh God. Empower your people. Empower your people. Those that are weary, those that are discouraged, those that are tired, oh God, empower them, strengthen them, encourage them, oh God, encourage them. I pray for you that your moment of grace is coming where you will not struggle, where you will not beg. Your time of grace is coming. Where it will not be dependent on anything. But it will just be that it is that reason that God has appointed to bless you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord manifest his glory in this ministry. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. That this ministry will pick up itself and run the course of its appointment in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your people. Bless your people. Bless your people, oh God. For their heart, for their service, for their commitment, for their devotion, for their dedication. Father, bless your people. Father, bless your people. For this is the season for right. This is the month of the blessing. This is the month of the elevation. This is the month of the alignment. Bless your people, oh God. This is the month you have appointed. And it's only seven days left to the end of this month. I ask, so oh God, as yourself. I lift a prayer for your church, oh God. And I say, Father, bless your church. Father, bless your church. Father, bless your people. I say, bless your people. In their finances, in their marriage, in their family, in their jobs. I say, Lord, bless them. I say, Lord, bless them. I say, Lord, bless them. This is the hour. This is the time. Bless them. Bless them. Thou that sit upon the circles of the earth, whose habitation is in eternity, and whose nativity is from everlasting, I call forth your name. Bless your people. For your name's sake, 
for that which you have said it is seven days it is seven days it is seven days to manifest your good name it is seven days to make a name for yourself it is seven days oh god this is a day of trouble it is a day of insult it is a day of disgrace that your people have come to death and there is no strength to push your people have come to the ideal season and they cannot manifest they have no power to manifest the blessing they have no power to possess their possession lift up your hands oh god Arise, O oh God. Arm of God, arise. Arise, O oh God. Arise. Arise, O oh King of Kings. Arise, arise. Arise, thou Jehovah. Arise, my God. Arise, my master. Arise, O oh King. Arise and bless. Bless. Bless, O oh God. Make a name for yourself. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let me have the King Charles for the oh Sabina. Church, shall we bless our daddy for the wonderful word given to us this morning? God bless you. It's time for Titan offering. So if you are in our midst and you brought your Titan offering, Titan offering, please.
Can we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We shall not die, but live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of